read of the entire compensation um, process. Alan doesn't call it compensation, he calls it financial redress. Because some, some of the money is actually our own money that we're being given back with interest for the money that they've taken from us. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's the speed of the whole process from start to finish. You almost have to prove how much your claim is worth down to little bits of paper and reports for this and forensic reports for that. And, and then they it goes into the system, disappears for a few months and then comes back out again, much reduced. And then it goes backwards and forwards. And instead of something that you could actually sit down around a table and thrash out, mm. Um, because none of us are dishonest. Um, you know, what we say is what we're owed. And, and, well, I just think it's madness. And people are getting elderly and people are terminally ill. There, there's an amount that are dying and have died. Um, you know, how much longer does it have to go on? Joe, you also made the point that it's not just about the red tape in this compensation process, which is bad enough, but it's the way you're treated. You talked about this process as like being put on trial again, like you're being made to feel like a criminal all yeah. over again. Yeah, you have to prove, I mean, I had to prove everything I put into the into the post office. I couldn't prove all of it, um, you know, but they, they say, well, okay, prove it then. You know, I want the documents for this and I want the documents for that. And you have to work out mileage to probation and things, and just crazy things like that, you know. It's just not fair. Yeah, I mean, Neil, just not fair, I mean, that feels like an understatement. You know, some of these sub postmasters, like Joe, have been waiting for nearly 20 years for compensation, as well as having convictions overturned. Talk to us about this compensation process, because victims were mm. promised by December last year it would all be sorted, is now being talked about um, next year. But today, in front of the committee, we heard that it could all be sorted by this August. Yeah, I think that the process, as you might describe it, for, for someone that's new to it, is pretty overwhelming. Mm. Uh, just the whole process in itself, there are so many moving parts to it. Uh, I think Joe and I appeared before the Select Committee two years ago, and in some senses, we've moved on a long way. In another sense, we've not moved on very far. Mm. And what I mean by that is that, obviously, the public mood is different. Mm -hmm. It's all been elevated to a new level, and I think the fact that people have felt empowered to come forward is a reflection of the fact that now everybody feels such widespread sympathy for all the victims mm -hmm. and revulsion at the conduct of post office. But there's a real heavy caveat to that in that we've, we've heard um, lots of good intention and, mm -hmm. uh, and we will deliver by these days. Uh, and as I said today, the select committee, the problem becomes in the, the fine delivery of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we will have healthy conversations with people in senior positions. And then it all gets unravelled in the detail. Whereas what we need to do is find uh, simple and creative solutions. A solution such as what the Minister came up with, with the fixed compensation mm -hmm. packages. Now, for some people, as, as Joe's pointed out, it won't touch the sides. But for others, it may work because their circumstances have, uh, are all unique and different. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think we've now reached a point in the journey where after so long, uh, we can look backwards and use our energy up feeling angry about mm. it, or we can say, draw a line in the sand and today's the day where actually the commitments that were made are commitments that are going to have to be delivered on. Mm. And come the end of the year, everybody that has been an unfortunate victim mm. of this scandal are paid off and able to look forward and enjoy the rest of their lives. Yeah, well, the post office minister today in front of the committee said August for mm. all this. You don't look... I have as... one eye on that. <laughs> yes, you'll, you'll, you'll be holding him to account for that. And just to put it into perspective for people watching, because it's important to remind people of the scale of this. We're talking, you know, 700 plus victims, some still coming forward now. Only three sub postmasters have received complete payouts, full and final, just Three, that just gives people watching an idea of the long drawn out process of this. Joe, I know particularly since this ITV drama, new victims have been coming forward. You've been in touch with a number of people that have felt 
able, because of that drama, because of seeing your story, to reach out to you personally? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the power of <laughs> the, te the telephones to actually tell you who you are and where you are and be people be able to contact you. Mm. But I've had people message me saying, it's happened to me. Um, and as I say, there's, there's a guy who, are, who I've known for years and he never had the strength to come forward. And I introduced him to Neil and, and he's in the process now, which he was too frightened to come to come out before. Um, and I think because there's safety in numbers now on people, and especially now, people realise the public are actually behind us yeah. and they don't believe for one minute we'd, we've been dishonest. Um, it's, it's really powerful. We'll get more people, I'm sure we will. Yeah, and as we were hearing at that committee, there are some victims that are being contacted that don't want to have anything to do with this. Mm. They're so traumatised, their lives are ruined, they don't want to revisit it, even for compensation. And um, Joe, today was about hearing your side of the story. And, you know, Neil, I know you were representing a lot of the victims as well, but it was also a chance to hear from the boss of the post office and the boss of Fujitsu after you spoke to the committee. Yeah. You stayed in the room to hear what they had to say. Uh, let's have a listen to some of their answers from today. Mr Patterson, can you tell me when specifically management in Fujitsu, ideally the month and the year, knew about yeah. the Horizon system being faulty? I can't answer a month and a year. Yeah, you're saying here now that errors were known and how fine. So when was the first error, again, month and year, passed to the post office? So I can't tell you month and year. So what will you commit to writing to this committee to tell us when? So I know that Sir Wynne, this is one of the phases of the investigation. I just want to check, Mr Reid, from your point of view, when do you think post office staff first knew that remote access to Horizon terminals was possible? I couldn't give you an exact date on that. Why can um, you not answer that question? It is fundamental to this case. Questions they knew they were going to be asked, Joe. How do you feel watching that back? Nothing's changed. You know, in all the years, nothing's changed. And that's... I kind of knew that's the answers they'd give, but, um, yeah, nothing's changed, sadly. The boss of Fujitsu sat there today as well, and he said he's not met a single victim of this scandal. You were sitting behind him when he said that. You could have reached out and tapped him <laughs> on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does that make you feel? This is the first time he's answering questions publicly in this decades-long scandal, anyone from Fujitsu, and he hasn't met any of you personally. No, no. Well, Nick Reed has met some of us and, and said sorry, but it's like, it's the corporate apology. And, um, yeah, he hasn't... So he's, he's been able to hide, and I think now, um, because of the drama, that, he, you know, his feet are being held to the fire and he's suddenly come out from wherever he's been... Um, but, yeah, it is it is what it is. I wasn't expecting anything else. So frustrating. So what happens next, Neil? You know, that's the big question, because people who have been following this today will be frustrated watching, because they've all invested in you, Joe. You know, yeah. this, this ITV drama, 10 million people watch the final episode. People are invested in this story, and they will have looked at those answers and gone, that's not good enough. Neil, what's the next stage? I think the momentum of what uh, what has started over the last couple of weeks needs to be maintained, and what that means is delivering on promises. So it means delivering fair compensation. Mm. It means accountability. I think that everyone, without fail, has confidence in the statutory inquiry, has mm. confidence in Wynn Williams and his team uh, to get to the bottom of what's gone on. I think for a lot of people... Part of the healing process is that accountability. You know, we've seen lots of medical evidence that says people are psychologically um, traumatised, deeply affected, and, and part of that process of getting better will be to see the people that put them in the position that they're in, mm -hmm. held to account. People aren't vindictive. They've just got a real sense of justice. Mm -hmm. So those two limbs need to run side by side, full and fair compensation, quickly, accountability for those that have done the wrongs. Joe, your story was very much a central part of the ITV drama. Yeah. <laughs> How did that feel, watching it on screen? Well, what it's, was that like? it's so true. You know, when you see Monica in the little post office in the dark with one light on, that was me, night after night after night. I used to sit in the office. I'd phoned the help desk and they said, oh, you, you know, you're the only one it's ever happened to. And I used to think... It's got to be here somewhere, mm. you know, and I'd print off stuff and I could never find it. And 
it's just it it was a long time of sitting in the dark trying to you know almost in in panic mode thinking how am I going to tell mum and dad and David husband and um you know how am I going to tell everyone I need more money to put in um because I always thought it was something I was doing wrong they made me believe that it was me um yeah <laughs> I wish I hadn't been so naive but anyway I am where I am <laughs> but yeah for you you're one of the sub-postmasters that had your conviction overturned. You've come out the other side of it. You're still very much living it. Yeah. You know, whenever you talk to a victim, you say, you know, this will continue with me forever. It's not just going to go away because my conviction's been overturned or I've got compensation. But you are still in this for others. And I know, Neil, that whistleblowers have come forward since this ITV drama that could be integral to this campaign going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Another positive spin-off of mm. the drama is that people have felt more confident to come forward, whether that's victims or, in this case, whistleblowers. We've had a number of people that we've uh, passed on to the inquiry that may have evidence of interest to the inquiry. And, Joe, just a final thought. This continues. Yep. I think, as you said to me before we came into the studio, you want to ride this wave, this yeah. momentum. What does justice look like to you? Justice to me looks like the whole of the group that I went into court with, the 555, it looks like everybody receiving full and fair financial redress. Once all of the 555 have been paid, then my job will be done.